Okay, the first thing we're going to do in section 3.2 is we're going to fill in the rules from section 3.1 that we learned. Okay, so let's see if you can remember them. I know some of you already knew them before, but not everyone. What is the derivative of k? Zero. Whoops, let me use white. Shows up better. What's the derivative of kx? K. What is the derivative of x to the n? Nx to the n minus 1. And what is the derivative of k times f of x? k times f prime of x. And then what's the derivative of f of x plus g of x? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Um, and I didn't actually express, expressly state it, but this works for subtraction, too. If this had said minus, it would still work. No problem. Okay? Okay, I have three more rules for you that you didn't have in the last section. And they're related specifically to two functions that we've seen models for when we found models with our calculator. One of them is the natural log function. Remember doing logarithmic functions? And the other one was where we had an exponential function. And both 7 and 6, both of those are exponential type functions. Okay? So I'm actually going to skip 6 and go to 7 because it's the easier one. And then we'll backtrack. This one you actually saw a picture of when we did graphs last class period. We had a graph that looked like this. And some of you thought that I was really like telling you a joke when I told you that the derivative looked just like it. Do you remember that? And I was like, no, really, it really does. It's the only one that has the same form, but it really does. The, x, or the uh, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. He's like the best one ever because he's his own derivative. Now let me go back up to number six. Obviously, number six looks kind of like number seven, right? I mean, in fact, if you just think that the letters are not important, it looks exactly the same. The letters are important because E actually has a numerical value, as you all know, and B is a just any number. So it is slightly different. But there's still a component of it that's the same. Leave a little space and write in B to the X. So the derivative of E to the X is E to the X. The derivative of B to the X includes B to the X, but it also includes the natural log of B. And you can write it either before, or if that looks funny to you, you can write it after. And if you think about it, that actually works for number seven as well. If you had somehow forgotten the derivative of e to the x was e to the x, and you tried to do this, it would be okay because does anybody remember what the natural log of e is? It's one. So see, it works. It even works for e to the x. And then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So you now have eight simple rules. And next class period, we have, I think we have two more coming our way. Yeah, there are two more sets of rules that your book uses. And we will have one class period on each of them right after spring break, Tuesday and Thursday. And then I know we've talked about sort of in passing this thing called the gateway before. Do you guys know what I'm saying when I say gateway? And I said, I'll tell you more about what it is when we get there. The gateway is 20 questions of derivatives. All these eight rules plus the two we haven't covered, which will be after spring break. And you will have 20 questions where you use simple rules to find 20 derivatives. That's what it is. Okay? So we'll be practicing on that a lot that week after spring break. Cole? Will we have to use the simple rules? You will want to, because they will be ugly. Okay. So they will not be simple looking questions. They will be ugly questions. So for example, take a look at this. The first part of this, negative 5x squared, you could do that with the limit process. You could, right? I mean, right, sure. But I never showed you how to do the limit process with 0 0.02 to the x. So you wouldn't be able to do the limit process in that piece. And there, that's where the problem lies, Cole. All right, so taking a look at this one, we're going to use simple rules to find the derivatives of what comes next. So using simple rules, what would the derivative be of negative x5, x squared? Negative 10x. Hang on, let me give myself some more space. Now, I'm going to make comment of what I wrote down in case you didn't write it. Notice I did not write equals and keep going. Because what I'm writing down now is not equal to what I started with. I'm finding the derivative. So I'm writing the derivative notation, h prime of x equals. So some of you are in the habit of doing something that looks like this. 
I'm going to move this so that I don't mess it up. What's wrong with what I just wrote? Right, I'm saying that, and I'm not finished with the problem, it's true, but I'm saying that the original thing that I started with is equal to what I'm now writing, and it's not, right? It's not. So we don't want to have that notation indicate that for us. Actually, let me do, there we go. So we need to use the new notation, h prime of x equals negative 10x. Okay, so that's the, one of the rules from section one. 0 0.02 to the x is one of my rules from 2 point, or 3.2. It's rule number what? 6, b to the x. And b to the x rule says that I need to take that same constant and raise it to the power x. It doesn't change, but it does get multiplied by the natural log of that constant 0 0.02, either written in front of or behind the value 0 0.02 to the x. And you want to hear another beautiful fact? You're going to like this one the best. This problem's fine as is. But later on, we will have problems that will look really messy. And you don't have to simplify them. Now, come on. That's pretty good news. That's almost like applause worthy, really. And when you get to how messy they are, you will understand. Caleb, have you seen messy problems that you would rather have not simplified in a past life or something like that? Yes. Yes, yes. I have two. Many a time. So let's see if we can find one of those today. I don't know if we will today or not, but we definitely will. Definitely will after spring break. All right, taking a look at this one. We're starting out by writing the notation j prime of x. That should be on your paper. This is a combination of two rules, just the first part alone, 1.07 times 5 to the x. It's a combination of two rules. What combination of rules do I have here? Yeah, what 4 was was the constant multiplier, right? I've got this number in front times something else. And the something else is the exponent that I just did, in, like the last rule that I just did, where I have an exponent or a value that's a constant to an exponent x. So the constant multiplier rule says that the 1.07 comes along for the ride. He's going to be multiplied by whatever comes next. So I write him down and I move on. And then I need the derivative of the 5x. So what's the derivative of 5x? Braden, you're saying it. 5 to the x, and then what? What's missing? Natural log 5. This is rule number 6. The derivative of 5 to the x. And you do need to be careful, because it's really easy to look at the problems, um, especially if you're writing them yourself, not on something that's already printed, and confuse, for instance, 5 to the x with 5x, and those are different, right? So be careful as you're writing that your exponents really, really look like exponents and your other things really, really don't. Okay, that's half the problem. The next half of the problem is the 2 and a natural log of x. 2 is, again, a constant multiplier. So he comes along for the ride. And then I need that to be multiplied by the derivative of natural log x, which is 1 over x. And you're done. That's cool, right, Luke? Yeah, you betcha. How about C? Find the derivative for the following, same directions. K prime of x. The 4 is a constant multiplier. So I get to write him down. What's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. So that's fantastic. And then I have plus 5. Plain old 5 by him little lonesome self. Zero. He gets cut. Yes, he does. He goes away into oblivion, never to be seen again. All right? He's gone. This is the derivative. 4 e to the x. All right. And no business class would be complete without an example that's a word problem, would it? No, it definitely wouldn't. So we need one. Here's our one. And we've seen this problem before. Do you remember our lab mouse? You guys remember our lab mouse, don't you? We've seen him twice, once in class, once in the homework. And then I even talked about him in the homework afterwards when I handed it back. The weight of a lab mouse between 3 and 11 weeks of age can be modeled by the equation. W of t equals 11.3 plus 7.37 natural log t grams. And then it has this funny, weird alignment thing going on where it says, 
the age of the mouse is t plus two weeks old, i.e., for a three-week-old mouse, t equals one. Okay, so the first question asks us to find the rate of change model. Okay, so let's just remember for ourselves, what does rate of change model mean? Slope, what else does it mean? Slope model, derivative model, instantaneous rate of change, tra uh, derivative of the tangent, or the slope of the tangent lines, derivative, or the uh, slope of the, limit of the slope of the secant lines, we had all those words, you remember them? There was like five or six of them, it was crazy. This phrase needs to be sort of like, written on your forehead or maybe on your hand or something. Don't really write it on your hand, that's cheating. But it should be sort of like engraved in your mind that when you see rate of change model, you know that this means to find the derivative, okay? So what would the derivative of this function be? Starting out, it would need to do w prime of t, correct? All right, so what would the derivative of 11.3 be? Zero. How about when we get to the 7.37 natural log t? <coughs> 7.37 times what was that, Kendra? Well, they used t, so we'll stick with t. If you switch it to x, just make sure all of them change to x in the problem. All right. Um, or if you really have a hankering to write it differently, you can write it like this. It's the same thing, right? 7.37 divided by t would be the same thing as 7.37 times 1 over t. Okay, I'm going to erase that because I need more space right there. That's the rate of change equation. But as you know, from everything that we've done so far, models have lots of things in them. And they aren't just the equation. There's a name, which we did that, w prime t. There's the equation, which we did that part. The next things have to include all of the units of what's going on. The first thing we list are the output units. So the original output units of this function was grams. What will the output units for the derivative be? Age. That'll be part of it. Grams, Grams per age. Remember, the output units, actually I'll write down the derivative output. Derivative output is always the output per input. You guys did a whole section on that. It's the section I didn't pick up. I don't know what it was, two, three or something like that, whatever section was last time that we didn't collect. Output per input, output per input. So the output here was in grams, the input was in weeks, so this units, this function's units output will be what? Grams per week. Grams per week, that's the output. And then we have to say the same thing that we already said. That part doesn't change, that's kind of the cool thing is whatever it said next will just be repeated. What did it say? Where the age of the mouse is t plus two weeks old. And hearkening back to what we did last time with graphs, remember I told you that whatever the output or the input looked like on the graph, whatever your x values were, they were also going to be on your derivative graph? The same thing's going on here. Your input, your, your units and everything, all the values stay the same on your x values. So the notation, the language, the units will all stay the same on your description of them as well. Okay, they don't change on the graph, they don't change on the function notation. This is the rate of change model. You have two more questions then. And these questions are easy to get confused and answer them incorrectly if you're not being careful. One question asks us for the weight of the mouse. The other question asks us how the mouse's weight is changing. Those are very different questions and they have to be answered in different fashions or different ways. When it asks you for the weight of the mouse, which of the functions in this problem is it asking you to use? The first one, the one that it gave you. I'm gonna write it down. It's asking you to use W. Wasn't it called W? It was, right? Now, it's not W of nine because it had this funny way of inputting this. For a nine-week-old mouse, what was I supposed to input? Did I add to or subtract you? Be careful because it gave you an IE over there, remember? 
Yeah, a three-week-old mouse, I put in t equal one. So a nine-week-old mouse, I put in, I subtract two, I put in seven. Most of our inputs are not weird like that, so don't, don't stress about that too much. That's why they gave you a lot of information to try to keep it clear. All right, so we've got W of seven. So grab your calculator, plug in 11.3 plus 7.37, and natural log seven. That's what you're doing. You don't have to write it all down. The fact that you wrote down W of seven tells me that you know which one you're plugging it into, or at least we hope. I don't need that. I've got that, actually. Here we go. So just like always, three decimals of accuracy, all that good stuff. What do you get for W of 7? What did you get, Lucas? Um, 25.641 grams. Fantastic. 25.641 grams. And you even have the units perfect. It is grams. This is the weight of the mouse. The original function's output was grams. All right, how rapidly is the weight changing? What is this problem asking me to do? Use the derivative model or the rate of change model. So it's asking me to find W prime of still seven because it was a nine week old mouse. That part doesn't change. So looking back at this particular model we created on part A, we need to take 7.37 and either multiply it by one over seven or simply divide by seven, right? So what do we get when we take 7.37 divide by 7 with three decimals? Should be one point something, right? What was it? 0.53. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Grams per week. Okay, so pause with me for a moment. We're not going to write it down, but there will be times when it tells you to interpret what you found. So let's make sure you understand what you really found. If you were writing an interpretation sentence on part B, what would it say? When the mouse was nine weeks old. Weeks, but yes. Oh, when the mouse was nine weeks old, keep going, you're doing great. Um, the rate is increasing by one. No, not yet. Oh, you were doing part A. I want to do part B, not oh, C. Sorry. It's okay. When the, so you're still, when the mouse is nine weeks old. Oh. Okay, can someone help work out? What would we say for the weight of the mouse? It's not increasing or decreasing. It just is. Right? So for the nine-week-old mouse, so when a mouse is nine weeks old, it weighs 25.641 grams. And then what would we do? Do you have a question, Lainey? What you got? Where did we get 1.053? We plugged it into the derivative model down here. Oh. This, the seven end of there, because it said W prime, right? Okay, so if we were doing an interpretation model, Brooke, help me with this one, because you're on the right track for this one right here for C. Oh. When the mouse is nine weeks old, what would you want to tell me on this one? Fantastic. The weight is increasing by, that was perfect, well done. I've got the ING by 1.053 grams per week. All right.